let me pop over here and let's do a quick rundown of what we're doing. So today we're going to create that PB works and we're going to create a wiki and we're going to do what this module calls who I am. So we're going to put some things into it. And again, if you've been with me before, these are all very familiar to you. The difference is this go around is you do have to read some things and it's all inside this folder and they're very short. This is not heavy reading by any stretch of the imagination. Tomorrow we will do a Twitter setup. And again, um, I will do a sort of, hi, this is Twitter. We all know what it is by now, but I just want to show you how you can have your Twitter feed become more focused. Now, if you already have a Twitter account, can you use it for this? Absolutely. I'm not requiring you to reinvent wheels. What we're doing is we're going to be building a personal learning network, a PLN. And the reason why we're doing this, I'll show you here in just a minute with a, the one and only PowerPoint you'll have to sit through. Um, we believe very strongly that you can't have a PLC, a professional learning community, unless the members of that PLC also have PLNs. Hence the use of the PB works, the use of a wiki that gives you a space to have your PLN. Could we do this within the confines of a Google Classroom? Absolutely. I mean, there wouldn't be any reason why we couldn't do this. The only difference that I find with Google Classrooms right now, and the Goog is working on this, is they don't know how to handle embeddable code, which as you know, we kind of live by in these classes. The ability to control what people are seeing is very, very important. One of the things that teachers complain about all the time about using technology in their classroom is it's too much. It's too big. Kids get lost. Kids wander. And the ability to control where kids go and what kids see speaks very eloquently to the use of things like Google Classroom and to things like PB Works as a wiki. Now, the PB Works can be put into your Google Classroom as a link. Perfectly OK. Uh, when we set up our wiki, we'll make sure that it's public instead of private so that anybody can see it. We're going to learn. You already know what Twitter is, but we're going to learn very quickly how to control Twitter. And then we're going to the um, techie side, the nerdy side, is we're going to learn how we can actually put our Twitter feed that controlled Twitter feed. I don't need to see the president's tweets. I don't need to see um, Beyonce's tweets unless I want to. But I can control all that and put it into my wiki. And you'll notice here that what it's basically saying is that we're going to create a Twitter account. If you have one, that's fine. But the point is we want you to discover 10 educators or educational organizations for you to follow. And there are some, as we'll discover tomorrow, that are right there. They're very easy to find. I want you to do a tweet or a retweet, either way. Okay. On Wednesday, we will do probably the most, not difficult, but the one that kind of you wrap your head around. This is RSS. If you are a podcast listener, you're already very familiar with RSS because that's how podcasts work. Uh, Steve does a little bit more in depth in this because it's something most folks don't know about. Uh, and it's something that frankly is something very near and dear to my heart. I have been a podcaster since, what is this, 2018? I have been a podcaster since the late 90s. Uh, that's when it first started to take off. Um, I have done podcasting with kids all over the state of Kentucky. And it's one of those areas that it kind of came and then it kind of went away and now it's really, really back in a big way. You need to know what it is. Uh, I'll even show you how you can do your own podcasting. Uh, I thought about doing that for this class, but as you can see, all we're looking for here again is for you to create uh, links to podcasts and only five on this particular one. And again, we can take this and put it into your wiki very simply and then finally and we're gonna have to do all this on uh, Friday 
we're going to do curation. Now, there are lots of curating apps out there. Uh, when I first started this class, we used to use something called Digo, D-I-I-G-O. Then we went to Scoopit. I still have a Scoopit account that still sends me things. Essentially, they're creation tool, curation tools, excuse me, C-U-R-A-T-I-O-N. Um, anyone who's ever worked in libraries, as I have, that is a term that's near and dear to our heart because what it, we do in libraries is we organize material. Could be books, could be magazines, could be articles. When I worked for U of L's library, um, I worked for a library that was out on Shelby campus, and it was my job to slowly but surely curate all the books that were in that library, all 1,256 volumes, over to from the old system of the Dewey Decimal over to the new Library of Congress. When I came down here on this campus and worked over in the library, I was in the um, research department. And in there, again, I was doing curation on here are articles and information that have to do whatever prof would ask for for their classroom. All very time consuming, all very hands on, carrying around big, heavy books. Um, we did have microfiches back then, but again, it was very hands on. Now, especially with a program like Pinterest, uh, digital curation is just as easy as it can be. And if, again, if you have a Pinterest account, good for you. If you don't, we're going to show you how to set one up. And it will become one of those things that um, you just kind of live by. I Every day, I get text from my Pinterest account that someone is looking at my stuff or that the stuff that I've identified as being important here is a link that I might be interested in. Your final, which we'll do on Friday as well, and you all know the routine. Uh, finals are due two days after the end of class. Well, since this is a very short class, you'll have to have everything done by next Monday. Uh, and as you can see, there's not a whole lot here. <laughs> Basically, what you're going to be doing is, is you're going to be putting in the links to the various pages that you have in your uh, wiki. And those links then, that forms your final with a couple of questions right here. And that's it, folks. That is it. It's very simple to do. Now, I'm going to click here and show you that we have articles for module number one just to show you where they all live. And it all looks the same. Each one of these has this kind of structure. Uh, and as I said, every article that you read that you'll be responding to, very simply, I don't need the great American novel, I just need you to show me you've read them. Um, they're all very short. And then here's our tools for who I am for today. And of course, that's our old friend, um, the PB Works. And here, Paige, is the answer that we were struggling with last semester with how do you get content into a PB Works? Remember, we were clicking all over the page, and we finally settled on using the HTML, CSS. It, it actually is this one right here. So here's these directions that will tell you how to do that. Here's our old friend, GoAnimate. We'll be using that today. Here's Padlet, uh, Revolver Globes, and free website counters. I'll show you how all that works. Very straightforward. So the first step we need to do is for me to share with you sort of an overview of what this is all about. And what I want to show you real fast here on our welcome page is a couple of things. First of all, you know this. This is the online class sort of, you know, disclaimer. Then down here, this is sort of me talking about what we're doing. You can watch that. Here is the catalog description. Here's some more information. This is what a PLN is. 
This is Will Richardson talking about PLNs. Will Richardson is very famous in the world of technology. I uh, used to teach a book uh, that he had. Uh, I think we've kind of gone past him. Here's what I wanted you to see. This is how to use everything that we are going to be using in class. So if you get behind, if you miss, whatever, well, you won't because we're so short. But here's a PDF that has every app that we'll be using and how to set it up. All right. You know what I'm missing? I am missing the one and only PowerPoint. Can I get a collective? Yay. So let me go get that real fast because I do want you to see it. And I apologize. I guess when I set this class up, I didn't think about putting in Okay, my box is not here. That's because you're on a different computer. There we go. Thank you, Dropbox. By the way, my passwords for these kinds of things are not ULIT241. <laughs> Everything else is, but not not the personal stuff. Running a little slow this morning. I don't know about you all. Things to be running a little slow out there. Sitting chewing my gum. Wow, I can't believe how slow it's running. Because it's running so slow? Yeah. Yeah, it really is slow. You know, and I don't know, that's probably a U of L thing. That's probably not anything else. Okay. Uh, real quickly, everybody can see the PowerPoint running up here. Just give me a yay or sure, Steve. Come on, Steve, get it on. Let's get this over with. All right. All righty, here we go. So what is a PLN? Well, the whole idea of this professional learning network is very simple. This is a way to organize the multiple inputs that we can get as teachers. And how do we organize it? and then put it somewhere where we can share it to people. The beauty of using a wiki is since the wiki has a unique address, a unique, unique URL, it's very simple for me to create a swan, P-L-N dot pbworks.com that I can easily share with the members of my group. And then within that setting, we can share the same information that we have found. Our class is an example of a P PLN and your department is an example of a PLN but that has also been kind of co-opted and people now call them PLCs. I used to tell the person in charge of PLCs in Jefferson County, you really can't have a PLC unless you've got a bunch of PLNs. 
And that was kind of flippant, but I meant it because the whole idea of this is people need to be informed and then inform people, bring their information to the group so that when you're sitting in department meetings or grade group meetings, you can have informed discussions about what's going on. Unfortunately, most PLCs are nothing more than pass-throughs. Here's the information from the district to tell you what to do in your classroom. Instead of you being able to find information that would be of use. So here's, I call it the five apostasies. Now, my good friend who's sitting across from me here, she may be familiar with the term apostasy because it is a biblical term, actually. Um, and what it means is changing the way we do think to a new way of thinking. If you think about it, that's where the word apostles comes from. And then here's a little quote from Einstein about we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we use when we created them. So let's go through this. An apostasy is an abandonment of what one has vol voluntarily professed, a total desertion or departure from one's previous understandings or practice. <clears throat> now, I'm not saying that you're going to totally walk away <clears throat> from teaching here. What I'm saying is that sort of top-down, heavy-handed, do this, do that, with the idea of the PLN, the whole point of it is, is that you become the owner of finding the information. So what are the five apostasies of professional learning network? Teachers no longer have to wait for a system to identify or solve their problems. They're empowered to do it for themselves. The second one is really important, especially in rural schools in Kentucky. Teacher in geographically isolated places are no longer intellectually or professionally isolated. Uh, in the work that I did in JCPS working with the state, this became more and more obvious as we would travel to different uh, places across the state working with school districts. We are blessed here in Louisville with a plethora of, of resources, which most rural communities don't have. So with a PLN, we can understand what our organizations at a national level, and you know those, those are plenty of them, NCTM, National for the teaching of mathematics, um, you've got them for every perfect for every area or every discipline. They can have your professional questions and problems solved now, not at a predefined space and time. Again, putting out questions through the use of your Twitter account, you'd be stunned at how much information you get back. And what I have found, Pinterest more and more is becoming a great solution. You put out there a Pinterest request for, I need to see handouts that I could use with my students who are learning X, Y, and Z, wow, you will get inundated with suggestions. And then the idea that we can harness collective intelligence rather than be restricted by our own, prescript, our own prescriptive job titles. We can crowdsource. We can understand ideas from a multiple uh, points of view instead of the one point of view that either we have or that we're being told to have. It's a frictionless medium. The internet allows us to form PLNs with more people much more easily. It's a frictionless medium for communication. We can keep conversations going. We can keep, it says here, conference energy alive. Well, how about PD energy alive? The idea that we have to sit through lots and lots of professional development. Well, what if you went back from that professional development and took the ideas that you had had presented there, put them into your Pinterest and start sourcing information about what the PD was about? Now you really can start building on what the PD was supposed to do. And why email when you can text or Twitter? Uh, you've heard my speech about if you try to get a hold of me through email, you're in a queue with a whole bunch of other emails. If you want to get a hold of me for an answer to get something done, you're going to text me. Same thing in Twitter. Putting out information, you get very quick responses. And then we have knowledge management. So we are connected to people we control, we look for the quality knowledge instead of just getting junk. And that, unfortunately, has become what Twitter is known for now. 
Uh, and that's not a political commentary, by the way. There's plenty of junk on both sides of the political divide right now. The problem is Twitter, everybody uses Twitter. In fact, um, you've heard me tell the story about my good friend whose son uh, with Down syndrome uh, has become a movie star. And one of the things when he was sort of breaking into the whole field was he was told by his agent, you need to have a social media presence, both Twitter, both Facebook and Instagram. And you need to have at least 50,000 followers before anybody will take you seriously. That's the world we live in today. The flip side of that is quality information is now readily available out there and connecting to people who are connected to that quality information is readily available out there. And it, it, how is this happening? Well, because of the rise of the Web 2.0 concepts, social media, uh, interactive media, all of this has brought us to a point where I was watching the Apple WWDC yesterday. One of the things that Apple is getting concerned about is the fact that we're spending way too much time on our devices. Um, and it's interesting, uh, Tim Cook, I heard him on NPR this morning basically defending that position. I don't disagree with that. What I would argue for is we need to be more selective about what is in our social media. Uh, Facebook, as you well know, has become the old folks uh, way of, of communicating. Whereas now the, in fact, even Twitter is, has become more of the old folks way of communicating. Whereas Instagram and Pinterest have become, and like, have become more and more what kids are using. Again, I don't care about any of that stuff. What I care about is what is the quality of the stuff that I get from it. And as the end, year, again, reflecting back on what Tim was saying, I can control that. So here's sort of the, the steps you go through when you develop a PLN. You kind of kind of do a lurk, a skim. Uh, lurkers is a classic old, old internet term for people who kind of join communities, join groups, and then just kind of just sit there and they just sort of look at what's coming through. And then sometimes they go, huh, that really isn't what I was hoping this would do for me. And they just sort of pop out again. And once you find the organizations, the groups, the communities that really do meet your need, then you start doing the next step, which is asking for help and opinions. And then as you become more knowledgeable, you start giving back the help and the opinions. Then you start something. You see this all the time in Pinterest. Uh, one of the things I dearly love about Pinterest is I can be very, very, very specific in Pinterest. And I can ask for, search for things that have to do with language arts worksheet grade five. I'll find a Pinterest for that and I can pin it. And then I can collect these things right now. Um, my Pinterest account is basically I'm getting more and more messages from people who are connecting to me using my Pinterest, which is, you know, kind of cool. Uh, but that's because I started a Pinterest uh, board, which is what they're called, uh, that had to do with bariatric eating. One of the things you may or may not know is I went through a uh, procedure in December where essentially it took away 60 percent of my stomach. I'm now down about 60 pounds from where I was then. But the most important thing is I've had to learn how to re-eat and how to cook differently. Um, and I'm on a, a very uh, strenuous uh, exercise program because I'm putting all the muscle back into my body. And I have a Pinterest board for all of that. And it's kind of fun because I do like to eat, but I also like to cook more than anything else. And so I'm kind of meeting my needs and sharing with other people. A lot of people will join every social network possible. Um, I think we've become so familiar now with most social networks that uh, we can be a lot more judicious in deciding upon which one to do. 
you'll notice I do that in this class. And we basically, if we do that, then we fall into the trap that Tim Cook was talking about yesterday at the Apple conference. And that is we fall into this sort of being overwhelmed and then we would just drop the whole thing. We have to find that right balance. So this is from our old friend uh, Punya and Kohler. You remember them from our TPAC studies. Uh, we need to understand that these things that we're putting into our PLN are affordances. And affordance is nothing more than something that allows you to do something else. And we have to have time and space and playful interaction with them to understand their purpose. Now, I'm going to jump through this rather quickly from here on out. Here's our old friend Wikispaces, which we all now know is going away. This is what we'll be working with uh, tomorrow. This is our Twitter. We're going to be putting that on. And again, let me stress, we don't need to worry about Twitter if we're worried about the junk coming through. We control everything. And then I just I just love the, the whole RSS thing. It's one of the things that um, it's so easy now to develop your own podcast. At the same time, finding RSS feeds, everything has an RSS feed. The homepage for the University of Louisville is an RSS feed. And if you put it into your wiki account, what will happen is every time they add something new to that home page for the University of Louisville, it's going to pop up on your wiki page that you have given to it. Now, would I do that? Probably not. I would be looking more along the lines of finding RSS feeds that have to do with professional organizations. Or if I want to find information because I am an auditory learner or a visual learner or both, I might want to find something that has more recordings, more videos that I can RSS to. And it's, RSS is underneath just about everything. You know that little subscribe button and the little bell thing you see in YouTube? Underneath all of that, fancy fancy, is nothing more than an RSS feed. And the beauty of RSS feeds is in the old days, and the old days was what, uh, 10 years ago when I first started teaching this class, the old days, I had to teach you how to code an RSS feed. Not anymore. Now it's just built into every browser. And then finally, we're going to be, of course, looking at these. Now, the difference between Scoop It and Pinterest, and the reason why I've kind of dropped the Scoop It idea. Scoop It, um, in fact, I don't even know if they're even in business anymore. Uh, I'll look for that. Scoop It was a creation that was sort of a magazine format. In other words, you went out and you said, I need to find all the information there is about this. And then Scoop It would send you web pages. Well, what was the problem with that? What is the problem with web pages? Web pages more and more have, are getting cluttered with junk, with ads and other links. And that was sort of the down, to me anyway, the reason why I kind of walked away from Scoop It, although, I, as I said, I still have an account with them. And the beauty that I loved about Pinterest, still love about Pinterest, is it is developed for you and me. I own what I collect and put into my Pinterest account. And so I'm being a lot more uh, considerate about my what I put in there. I don't want to see a lot of ads. I want to see the information that I'm looking for. So... I'm going to just jump through this quickly. Here are some. These are the professional uh, Twitter that we can go and add to our Twitter account. There's math. There's arts. There's social studies. There's English and science, by the way. Um, embedding RSS feeds into your will be a snap. You won't have any trouble. It's as simple as it gets. I'm popping through this because I want to get going. I've always relied upon the kindness of strangers. Uh, straight out of an uh, extra point for anybody who can tell me where it came from. 
Jessica, do you know? Streetcar Named Desire. Okay. You know, the famous Stella. I've always relied upon the kindness of strangers. So the professional network becomes a way for you to become more passionate about what you do because all of a sudden the world of information, not only has it opened up, but it's narrowed down. So you're not being hit by a tsunami. You're able to go and find the perfect spot on the beach where you want to enjoy your profession. Okay, and I, to me, this is what the the beauty of it. And the other thing to help you understand again this whole why are we using this wiki for all this, Steve? I have the ability within my wiki to control what comes in. I don't even have to go to Twitter because when I get it set up in my wiki, the feeds feed through the wiki. So everything becomes right there in front of me. And I have connections that help me do things better. All right. So that was that. Now, any questions? Let's get it on. <laughs> All right, let's look at what we're doing with our first module. We are going to create a PB Works. If you've had a class with me before and created a PB Works already, all you're going to need to do is log in to your pbworks.com account and click the button that says you're going to create a new wiki. You can create as many wikis as you want inside of PB Works. I want to make clear for this one that we're going to be using this link right here, this Red Kid uh, sign generator thing. We've used this before. I just like it. It's fun. Um, think about it for the class if you want. Just make a simple sign, uh, swans, PLN, if you want to do that. But if you want to, go back and look at it again and maybe put something in there a little more interesting. Notice that the Padlet or the Answer Garden, why is he putting that in here? Simple. What we want to do is we want your wiki space to generate the ability for people to ask questions and to have conversations. That's why we're putting either a Padlet or an answer garden. And we've used these tools before. Uh, I, I like Padlets because I'm into design. You know that. If, if you've been with me, you know that. Uh, and I like the Padlet because I can go in and make it look like something, make it look cool. Uh, I like Padlets because it's an easy uh, an, an analogy that I can give to people. You know the parking lot analogy when you're in a PD and they ask you to put sticky notes up on the wall uh, with questions that you didn't think about until the end of the PD? You know, a Padlet is very similar to that. Now, an answer garden, um, is it, the, the beauty of the answer garden is it's very stripped. It's very clean. It's very minimal. Uh, and you can use it to do the same thing as a Padlet. But in the answer garden, people are throwing things in there uh, that are for you to use. Again, same idea. And then, of course, I don't need to probably do too much talking about GoAnimate. Uh, there was questions. Uh, some folks have pointed out to me that GoAnimate for schools is going away. Yeah, it is. But rest assured, uh, it has resurfaced as something called Viron, V-Y-R-O-N-D. Don't ask me what it, what the ac or the, it's an acronym or what it means. So it will not go away. Um, if you want to use GoAnimate with schools, and we've had this discussion, very easy for you to set up a class by logging in as me. And again, as you well know, I give you free use to that. I've already got an account set up. Uh, we will have the use of GoAnimate for schools all the way through the summer. Uh, and then I will have, in fact, it already is. My account will be transferred over to this new thing called Viron. 3D revolver globes are just cool. Um, what it is is you are able to create a little globe that you can put onto your page, on your wiki page, and it will show you the connections of the people who visit your wiki. It's that simple. 
Uh, I have one that I run with a good friend of mine, uh, Caroline Sheffield, who, who is a chair of my department, but also is a social studies uh, prof here. We have a wiki out there that we jealously guard. It's all about doing um, using multimedia, using graphic novels in social studies classrooms. And we have a 3D revolver globe on the front page of that wiki. And the reason why we have it is so that when we show it, you can see that we're getting hit from all over the world. Now, are you going to get hit from all over the world? No, no, maybe, maybe not. Uh, but it does. It's nice to see. Uh, and if you get hit from when I say by hit, I mean, people visit. I don't mean you get a, you know attacked or someone tries to do something to your page. You will, you will see how many people have come into your revolver globe. And you can make them set up so that it can be, it keeps track of uh, the number of hits. In other words, uniques. In other words, when Jessica comes to my wiki page, it will register with the one because she's unique. If Paige came to my wiki page, then I would have two because she's a unique. But if Jessica and Paige come back to it, they're not going to add any more to that because they've already been identified as a unique. Now, if you keep track of the views, which is the number of times that they come in. So like the views that I get on my um, YouTube channel are into the tens of thousands now. Um, that's also nice because you get a sense of is this thing being used more than once? And the counter can do that as well. All right. So let me go ahead and jump to pbworks.com. And I'm going to go ahead and log in. Now, if you've never had a pbworks before, um, you will have to go through the steps to create an account. Creating an account, let me back up. Creating an account is as simple as clicking on this button right here that says get started. And you are going to want to do a EduHub. And you're just going to do, well, you don't have to worry about this because it's all free. Oh, let me back up. I shouldn't have jumped there. Sorry. We don't need to be a hub. All we need to be is just to have a good old PB Works. So I'm going to come down here and do education. Get started for free. That's what it says. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> Basic, free. Duh. So here we go. You're going to choose your address. This is where you want to be very specific. So if I were creating a new PB Works wiki, I'm going to want to call it my last name, PLN. Uh, if you want to call it your class, in other words, grade four at uh, St. Martha's PLN, you could do that, but that's a lot of stuff. I think just making it Thomas PLN dot wiki uh, dot pbx.com. You want to make sure that you keep it very simple so it's a sort of a toss off line. Yeah, come see my wiki. I've got all this information that I'm more than happy to share with you. Make sure that you agree that you will not use it commercially. In other words, you won't make any money off of it. Uh, and then create your account. Put your name put your email address, and then create your password. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and try this. I don't know if it'll let me do it. Let's see if I can put this in. So I'm Swan PLN, and my name is Stephen Swan. And I'm going to enter a password. I'm going to enter it again, and I'm going to hit next. It should kick me out. Oh, I agree. I will not use it for commercial purposes. 
and it's yeah see it's recognizing that i already have an account and it's saying hey that was the wrong password log in with the right password fine but you get what i'm doing here so i'm creating an account now i'm going to go ahead and go back and log in for those of you who have jesse with me you've already gotten in okay so what we're going to do once we get in is we're just going to basically build our a new uh wikis I want to keep calling it Wikispace. <laughs> a new PB Works. Okay. So here I am. I've already come in. And I'm now going to create a new wiki. So I went down to the bottom right to create a new workspace. Now I'm going to put in SWAN PLN. And I'm going to say it's for education. And I agree that this workspace is for non-commercial use. And I'm going to go ahead and go next. Who can view this workspace? You want to make sure that anyone can view it. Otherwise, I can't see it. If I were creating this for a very specific group of people, in other words, my grade group, my department, I might go ahead and do that box down below. This is only people I, in, I invite or approve. Um, we've had this discussion before. You have security through obscurity. In other words, you once you create this thing, you live in the interwebs. You live on the internet. You're a part of the billions and billions of what web places there are. So you have security that way. And I go ahead and leave it open to anyone because I want to be free to be able to say to someone, if when I'm at a PD, when I'm at a conference, when I'm just chatting with people, Hey, I've got some really good stuff. Come visit my PLN. It's swanpln.pbworks.com. You want people to feel free to come see your stuff. And so now I'm also agreeing to their terms of service, and I'm going to take me to my workspace. Here we are. The fun, and I do consider this fun, is in building the look of this thing. Let's take a quick tour around it for those of us who are new to this. Uh, this is your front page. And we're going to get rid of this in just a second because we've had this discussion too. We are now on the web. We are a part of the internet. Well, the internet, the web, hates blank spaces. It hates the null set. It must always have something there. So when you create your wiki for the first time, when it creates this front page, it has to put something there, otherwise it doesn't exist. So if you're the kind of person who wants to go ahead and build everything first, good for you, go ahead and do that. But realize as you build these new pages, you must put something on the page as a placeholder so that when you save it, it'll be there when you go back to look at it. So like if you're going to go ahead and build your Twitter page, who am I connected to? If you're going to build who I listen to, your RSS feed page, and who I get things from, that'll be your curation page. You are going to have to make sure you put something on each one of those pages. Uh, to edit a page, I click on the th tab that says edit. Ta-da! Now here I am. Below it, you see there's a very similar looking um, ruler to what you see in just about any word processor you've ever used, and it works the same way has the same abilities. Now, when you want to create things, you have a place here called Pages and Files. This is where you can create a new page, right there where it says New. Uh, as you can see, we already have some pages already in here. Uh, and this is where you can upload files, which we'll be doing here in just a minute uh, when we go out and we create our little sign that we put in here. One of the things that we um, dealt with before was when we were here in this edit space was we were trying to figure out how to put in the embeddable code. 
and we were using this link right here, which is called source. Well, in my research, what I've discovered is actually use this link right here called JavaScript. And there's a little box. There's a little box. And if we check, it then takes care of all the security issues about our browsers. Isn't that cool? So it will readily accept the Twitter feed. It will readily accept everything we have to do in this class. And what I like about it is it literally fills the whole page. Uh, when we did this before in uh, Wikispaces, Wikispaces really didn't know what to do with it in terms of how would it look on the page. And it was kind of just this little tiny box that appeared. This fills the whole page. So if I come to your Twitter feed page, buddy, I'm going to know what's there because they'll see it front and center. That was a nice aha moment because it's like, really? That's all I have to do? Uh, up here is you can put in links. So if you want to have your page take me anywhere within the PB Works or outside it, you can do that. Uh, and again, this is the other thing I love about PB Works. If I want to put a YouTube video in here, we used to have to go and do the embeddable code trick with YouTube and put them in. Not anymore. All you basically do is you go here and you click on YouTube, do your search, and when you find it, it puts it in. Again, just simple, simple. Uh, you can build a table of contents. Well, this is just probably one of the easiest tools I've ever worked with in terms of building things. So let's go ahead and do the first step, which is I'm going to blow all this writing out that's on this first page, on my front page. And I'm going to put something in here that's just a welcome. Now, just like in any word processing, I can go up here, I can bold that, I can change the font, I can change the size. You know how to do all stuff. But let me stress to you, just like in any other wiki, be it Wikispace or any other um, design program that is on the web, I have to realize that I am trapped within HTML code here. Um, PB Works, again, is really sweet because if I click on the source, there it is. This is what's actually doing what you see on the front page. The beauty of it is, because of that, it's very clean, it's very simple. Uh, if I ever had to, and I've already started doing this on some of my old wiki spaces, is to copy the code from the wiki spaces, and then I come over to a PB Works page, click source, paste this code in from my wiki space, ta-da, everything I had on that wiki space is now over here in my PB Works. It's just that simple. So, but the part that is a little bit off-putting when you first start is I can't move around on the page. In other words, things can't be moved around how it looks on the page. It's very much, here it is, right down this left-hand side. Now, if I want to have that kind of look where I have multiple uh, objects in one space, I can use what's called a table. And I can put the table in, and if I put in, say, a two-by-two two table, I have four spaces that I can then put in, say, four videos. Or I could put in, if I wanted to, <laughs> I don't know how that would look. It would look rather strange. I could put in my Twitter feed in one box, and I could put in my RSS feeds in another box. Oh, I, don't, I think that would look really way too crowded. But tables are a way that you can control how things look on your wiki. The other thing I can do is, and this is an old trick, I can go and hit enter, 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 and I can go down the page, especially if I'm putting more than one object on that page. And now I have a way of knowing that wherever I click, it's going to have a place for me to have an insertion point so I can put things All right, I'm going to jump back to our wonderful module here. And I'm going to go to creating that sign. 
So I clicked on the link that's in the module. It takes me to this uh, sign generator. And again, what am I doing here? All I'm doing here is I'm going to find an image that I want to use that would be sort of my jumping off spot for my PLM. And as you can see, there are tons, tons of ways to start. Why would you want a beaver sign? Why would you want that? I don't know. An outdoor plaque, chalkboard. Boy, if you're a teacher, which you are. Ooh, I didn't see the Beatles before. Ooh, Samurai Jack. I haven't scrolled down this far. Uh, there's the Simpsons. <laughs> it's a hot dog. I don't know why. Uh, Cal Brand, Cool Panther. I wonder if you can change the name of the school. It says Roosevelt School here. Let's click on that one just to see. Okay, so it's somebody made it for their school. Well, good. Good for you. I'm not going to use it because you won't let me change the name of the school. You get the idea. I'm sort of a peanuts guy, so I'm going to grab that one. And as you can see, I have lots of characters to choose from. I'm going to go ahead and grab Marcy. And Marcy is saying something. And... I'm going to have Marcy you don't have to fill in all three of the blanks by the way I'm just doing it And I'm sure there is a limit to what I can put into the boxes. It stopped me at together. That's as far as it let me go. So I'll go ahead and finish it off with here. All right. And I'm going to hit the button that makes it for me. And there I have it. Okay. So I have a Marcy picture, and the way I'm going to get that into my PB Works is I'm going to do a right click on the Marcy picture, and I'm going to save the image as, and I'm going to give it a name besides Young Sign, or Your Sign, excuse me. And I'm going to throw that on the desktop because, you know, I'm lazy. And it's easy for me to find it. There we go. So I've gone in and I've created my little sign. In my PB Works. I'm going to come over here to images and files and I'm going to upload a file and I'm now going to go on my desktop and I'm going to look for Marcy there she is and I'm going to open her and there she is and all I did was click on the file when it came in. Now, the thing to watch out for when I started this, let me go ahead and get rid of it, is I made sure where my insertion point was. I made sure where I was going to land with my file before I started. And then once I've got it loaded in, I clicked on it. Can I make her smaller? Sure can. You click on it once, and then down here is your little sizing box that you can either... Drag up, drag down. Okay, depending upon how you want to do it. Simple as that. Notice that my insertion point is waiting now beside the picture that I just put in. So if I want to add more text, I can start typing. It will jump down to the bottom 
of where the picture is, which, you know, maybe I don't want it to do that. Maybe I want it to start it under Marcy. So I'll go over here and click under her. And because I did that little trick of the return, 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 or enter, 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 I now have put my insertion point where I want it. I'm just going to type here, um, you know, a little explanation about what I'm doing here. Let's hear it for browser spell check. Although Pinterest is spelled right, it just doesn't know what that word is. Okay. Looking back at our module. So we've done our little uh, dealie for our sign. Hmm. Let's look at both Padlet and... I have to be careful. If I close this tab right here, I lose all of you. <laughs> so I have to watch that. So I'm going to go ahead and close my red sign thing. I've already done that. Let's go look at a Padlet real fast. I like Padlets. So I'm going to give myself a new tab. And I'm going to go Padlet.com. Now, for those of you who have never had a class with me before, um, using the following to get into these programs is very much allowed. In other words, my username is sbswan02 at louisville.edu, and my password is ULIT241, ULIT241, all lowercase, all one word. Can you create your own accounts? Sure. The only reason why you might like to use mine is it is a paid account, and it allows you to have access to all the content that's inside of things like Padlet. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. And if you've had classes with me before, you're like, oh, that's where those things came from. And it's basically saying, can I get show notifications? Sure. That's fine with me. I'm going to go up here and click on Make a Padlet. And the first decision you have to make is, how do you want your Padlet to look? Well, this is kind of interesting because, as you can see, um, you can have a Padlet that can be extremely organized, as in the wall, the grid, frankly, my favorite down here, the shelf. Or you can have it as sort of a canvas where things can move around. The stream basically is like um, very much like just a long line of boxes and you basically just can scroll down through there and the back channel is really interesting so if you have a, a, a padlet up and running during class kids can use it as a way of putting up those questions putting up those ideas that they're a little bit nervous about doing in front of all the other students um, there's another one. There is a uh, app out there that people do use in their classrooms, and it's nice. But the thing about any of this in Padlet is the ability for you to kind of dress it up, make it look nice. I'm going to go ahead and do the shelf one. And my artistic shelf. <laughs> okay. So this is where I can change the name. I'm going to change it to Swan PLN. And then down here, ask your questions or share here. Okay. And I'm going to put in resources. I forgot to add that. Okay, here we go. 
So I've done that part. Now this is the part, of course, that you know I get all gooey about, and that is what I want it to look like. What are your about? Hi. Hi. Are you Francis? I'm Christina. Christina. Yeah, I, I, I thought this was a building name, the ERTC. Oh. I didn't realize it was inside the building. Come on in. We've just had somebody walk in, so you're Christina Smith. Yeah. Well, Christina, I've got you down as being online, dear. Mm -mm. But go ahead, sit down, relax. That's Jessica sitting next to you. She's a pro. You're going to help her? Okay. We're kind of deep into it, babe, but it's okay because let me go ahead and get done for these folks, and then we've got the time that I can get you all caught up. Um, what I was telling everyone earlier is this class on the books is from 9 to 5. If I have you in here past noon every day, something's, something's up, okay? <laughs> we're we're going to get in and get out fast. Right now, what we're doing is we are setting up the beginnings of what we call a PLN. Why don't you go ahead and get yourself logged in? I'm just going to keep going up here. Don't worry. You'll be able to catch up. So uh, I'm going to click on more. And now I'm going to go out there and find my cool background that I want to use. I'm in a very rural mood this morning. So I'm going to go ahead and click on windmill. And I get this cool animated windmill turning. It's kind of neat. Okay. So I have decided that that's what my PLN is going to look like. And now I'm going to go here to my next. I'm going to make sure that it is public so that anybody can access it and anybody can write. Or if you worry about people getting onto your Padlet and leaving inappropriate things, you can have it moderated. In other words, if I put something onto your Padlet, uh, it literally sends an email to you and says, hey, uh, that little jerky kid that's in your class has put something on the Padlet. You might want to look at it. Most of the time, that's not something to worry about, but that's just to show you that you can control that sort of thing. But you must make it public, otherwise it won't show up. Okay? And that is that. I'll go next. And we're all set to go here. So this is what it looks like. I'm now going to come up here to where it says share. Oh, it wants me to name a column? Sure. I will tell it. Uh, let's see. Let's do Twitter questions. Okay, so there's my first one. That I'm going to have. Well, I did put a title in it. All right, let's just put it in Twitter. I'm going to save it. And now I can go across here and I can create my shelf labels. You get the idea. And finally, I'm going to put something in here called your resources. Now I'm going to go up here and get my code. There's a couple of ways to do it, but I think the easiest one or the one that is most interesting is to do the embed into your blog, although it's awful lot of text. I'm going to do the copy. So I've just basically copied the embed code. I'm going to come back here, and this is what we were talking about earlier with the way to handle embeddable code. You go to Insert. You go to HTML JavaScript. You put your code in, 
And then this little box right here, it says allow JavaScript and other potentially unsafe code. That's kind of scary sounding, but don't worry. And now I'm going to go next. And I'm going to go insert the plugin. If I want to make sure that it's working, I can do a big save. And when I scroll down, there it is. So it's now live. It's now working. As you can see, I have the little pluses underneath my columns. This is where people can add their work into it. I've got my pretty little uh, Marcy picture up here. My page is getting pretty full, isn't it? It's filling up pretty fast. I'm now going to go back to my edit button. And now I'm back in. In that great page, we have finally settled on how we can put all this embeddable material in here. And it works. It's nice and clean. Uh, the other thing I like about it is when you're working on the page, it, you know, before you had little gray box. Well, now it actually shows you. Um, you can see the code if you needed to jump into it. All right. Let's go back to module one. And as you all know, Christina, we're going to do something that, um, as I always say to people, this is more fun than a box of puppies. Uh, if you don't, oh, Answer Garden. We need to look at Answer Garden. Okay, so let me jump back and let's do Answer Garden. Answer Garden, like I said, is a much simpler, cleaner look. And all you have to do is you go to Answer Garden and you create one. And so here uh, you could just say questions for my PLN. In. <laughs> and then you have more options here. You can have a classroom brainstorm moderator. Again, this is so if you want to control what comes up, you can answer link. We're going to put in 40 so we can allow it. You can have a password if you want it. You can put in an email. Um, but if you're not turning it on with a, you know anything. A spam filter, do you want to turn that on or off? You know, you're not going to get that much, but I'm going to turn mine on just because that stuff drives me crazy. Um, can you use um, lowercase, uppercase, no change? Uh, I'm going to say no change. Let people type in. How long do I want this thing to last? See, this is the downfall of the answer garden. So I'm going to throw in here a week. But now let's stop and think. Maybe I would use the answer garden because I have just had a school-wide PD training on something. So I might want to put an answer garden into my PB Works wiki because I want people who are in my department, my grade group, to be able to have a place to kind of decompress or talk about what it was in the training. And voila, there I go. Now, again, what do we have here? What we have here is the ability to share it. And there is our old friend, our embeddable code. I'm going to click on it. Now, this doesn't, I don't think, no, it doesn't give me the ability to copy it. So as you can see here, I'm just going to click on it and it comes up uh, selected. I'm going to then copy that. And I can do a copy with the right click. I can do a copy with a control C or an apple C, depending upon what kind of machine you're on. Hey, what is the Miss uh, Chromebook? <laughs> what is it? Is it control C on a Chromebook? Yeah. Okay. I've got a Chromebook now. That's why I was asking you. Yeah, they're pretty good. They can do most oh, I love my Chromebook. I love my Chromebook. I have taken it to the beach with me yeah. and I, you can't beat it. All right. I'm popping back into here. I'm going to click where I want my answer garden. Re remember, guys, you don't have to have both of these, one or the other. But I'm just playing. 
So I'm going to go over here to insert, come down to that HTML JavaScript business, paste it in, allow JavaScript, and then I'm going to go next. Insert the plugin. So I want to see what it looks like. Save and continue. And now my poor page is just going to get filled with all kinds of stuff here. And boy, we're slow. We are slow. Trust me, it comes up. So one or the other is fine. There it is. Okay. So I have all kinds of choices here. Now, let's go look at our old friend because this is sort of the, the lift of today. And I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to just put you in to go animate. You know how to work it. Um, most of you who are on this list probably have your own characters in here that you've created. Alex, you've created a character. Uh, of course, Paige, you have. And I'm going to slide around and help uh, Chris, who's come in. So I'm, I'm going to be kind of dead air here. I'm not going to be yakking at you. But, of course, the chat room is open. If you need me, if you want to ask something, use your microphones or type it in. We can see it pop up on the screen here. I'm going to go to Go Animate. Go Animate is SBSwan02 at Louisville.edu. Don't worry about that date there. We are subscribed to Go Animate all the way through to the uh, fall, so they have to give it to me. And then the password below it is ULIT241. I'm going to log in. And I'm going to make a video. Now, what are we making? We are making your story. Doesn't have to be really long. Dave, I'm having trouble logging in to go animate. Is anything capitalized in the password? Mm -mm. Yeah, it's the password isn't working for me either. Yeah. Oh, you know why? Remember we had to change it because we, we did get hacked? Yeah. Remember we got hacked? Yeah. Okay, let me go in and I'm going to put in the password I think does work now. If not, we can fix it. Okay. I would have sworn it was 4175, which would have been last. Okay, it's saying no. Yeah. Let me get it reset. It. You think it's what? Let me just go ahead and get a new one. I'm going to go ahead and set it back to that ULIT241 because the person who was doing it is long gone. <laughs> okay, now what it's doing, of course, is it's going to send me an email. So let's give you some free time to kind of get caught up on everything. So what we've created so far is we've got our front page. We have created a sign. We've just given a quick little, uh, hi, this is what this wiki is for. We have either put in a Padlet, oh, I really like that Padlet, or we have put in an answer garden. So those are the things. Remember, one or the other, you don't have to do both. Let me get to my email, and I'll get this sorted out, and I'll get back with you. So, Christine, can I talk to you while I do all this? Are you overwhelmed? Nope. Good. What's well, good to hear?
Yes, yes, I got a new sign in from Dropbox. There we go. Go animate password reset. Thank you. We received your password. To reset your password, click the link below. Done. New password. U L I T 241 lowercase. U L I T 241 lowercase. Save my password. Okay. U L I T 241. Okay, Alex, that sounded like you. I, I think it was. Uh, go ahead, you guys. Try logging in now with the ULIT one and see uh, ULIT 241 and make sure it works. I'm going to start closing some of these tabs that I've got open. Make sure you use the link from... Oh, God, don't close that one, Steve. <laughs> make sure you use the link. Uh, Jessica's sitting over here. Are you still having trouble? Okay. Okay. So this is where you land, and we're going to make a video, and when you do that, this is where you land. Um, we've talked about this in the past. You have the ability to create, uh, under the first one, business-friendly. Don't let that throw you. There are tons and tons of different scenes that you can use. The whiteboard animation is kind of, I'm kind of becoming a fan of the whiteboard animation. Uh, it lets me do a lot if I want kids to do something where they, um, they've done a lot of research and there's writing they, they need to show. Whiteboard animation is good for that. The last one over here on the infographics basically makes just really cool um, animated infographics. So you can actually see changes happen. Um, that, one's, that one's neat. Um, I've got a, one of our good friends who is one of our members of this little party, uh, Danny Gleason, who's over at Wagner. She's using the infographic piece with her physics class so the kids can actually do experiments and see changes over time and then document that. But for your purposes here, all you're doing is you're going to do a business friendly make one and what we're doing is all we want is just a simple, your educational journey. How did you become a teacher? So I'm going to start by clicking on make a video. And again, the slowness of the network here at UofL may drive me crazy with this. Um, and if it gets too slow, I'm not going to spend too much time in here because you know how to do this. Character, your scenes are located right here. Under business friendly, just tell it to skip all the tutorials. This is too easy to use. You don't need all that. So I just close it all out. And I'm going to go business friendly. And then I'm going to go to backgrounds. And you'll notice that when you do that, all of a sudden, you get much, much richer choices. So let's just jump into education. And here is a teacher in a classroom on a blackboard. Here's a teacher in a classroom with a bunch of kids. Here is a teacher in a classroom. I guess it's supposed to look like a college classroom. Here's a school. Here's a locker hall. Now, let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and grab the guy. And all I do, and you know this, is just click on it once, and it flies over here and shows up. Now, this is where it gets really fun. When you click on the people that you want to put into it, you can create your own custom character. In other words, I don't want to use this guy. So I'm going to click on him once and highlight him. And I'm going to use my backspace or my enter key, and I'm going to get rid of him. And I can click on custom characters. And I can look in here and see if my custom character that I've made in another class is in here. It will be. If it's not, I'll make myself a custom character. So I'm going to click on the plus. And I'm going to jump into the character. And what it allows me to do is literally build a character. 
So I'm going to start off with, um, this is me now, since I'm not fat anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And I'm going to decide how I want to look. Now, pay attention to the fact that you can change everything. Just because I got this default looking young guy here, is it how I'm going to look when it all gets said and done? Right now, I'm sitting here kind of in a relaxed mode in a just a shirt. So I'm going to go and say, all right, got that. Here's my pants. Uh, what kind of pants am I wearing? Well, I'm wearing jeans. I'm not wearing skinny jeans. I'll just grab these. I can change the color down here. You know, go to the next one. Hands, you know, this is where I can start getting my skin color correct. Well, that was gloves, it looked like. There's shoes. I'll put some shoes on. Here we go. Now I can get my skin color and my face correct. So I have a beard, but not a very big beard. So I'm going to kind of go with this guy right here. He's got a little beard now. On the hairline, this is where I can change uh, the fact that I don't have much hair. So I can fix that. Uh, the mouth, I can have a nice little smiley smile. Ears, I can make myself big ears. I can have hair earrings. Eyes, I can get the my eyes to look right. I, my eyes always kind of look surprised at the world. Eyebrows, if I've got, uh, you know. Ooh, I don't want him to look like that. Looks like he's kind of angry. Nose, I can get my nose right. Glasses, yes, I wear glasses. We all know that. Okay. And again, it's, I don't know what, this is kind of a beard thing it throws in here. Kind of interesting. My beard looks more like that, but of course it's not that color, so I'll change that down here. Uh, need to change my hair color. So I'll pop back into here. Change my hair color a little bit. You know what, let's see if there's a bulb. Do we have just a bulb? There's got to be a bald in here. Uh, you can do it with hats and things like that as well. Oh, look. I can have a shark on top of my head. Isn't that just too hilarious? I'm going to pop through here. Earrings, eyes. Eyebrows, nose, glasses, facial hair, done. Click on the icon with the little uh, disc icon that'll save it. And now you are a part of GoAnimate. I'm going to go back to make a video. Start over here with business friendly. Wait forever for it to load. going to click on my background. I think I'll go back and do the same one I was using with uh, the guy in the classroom. Put him in. Drag that in. I'm going to get rid of the prof with the pointy stick. I'm going to go into the characters. I'm going to go into custom character because I'm in here somewhere. And I'm going to find me. <laughs> well, you can sure see the kids have been using this, can't you? Look at all of these different looks that are in here. Uh, again, I'll stress to you that come the fall, when you're back, we will have a different way to access the... Uh, you know what? That's Tim Flynn. I'm going to go ahead and be Tim Flynn. Okay. I'm going to use a character that a person in our class developed. So here's Tim. I'm going to make him a little bit bigger because I want him to be more the focus of this little thing because he's going to be talking to us about his journey. Notice when you do select a character that you can have the character be doing things. Right now, Tim's just kind of standing there. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and click on it. So he's kind of pointing up to things. No, I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that. Let's try this one. Now he's pointing to more things. He's pointing to himself. Uh, as I said, the problem with GoAnimate is you can get lost in GoAnimate. Not lost in a bad way. Lost in a good way. You can play with this and play with this. Uh, for dialogue, I can just click on that. And I can use the text to speech. And I'm going to just start talking here. Okay. You can pick the voice that you want to have. Um, obviously, you can change it to female if you want. You can change it to these different languages. Kind of interesting. I'll stick with English. Uh, and I can have these different voices. I'll go ahead and pick Paul. I can hear the voice. I started my career after many years wandering the earth looking for myself. And then I can add the voice. And now he will speak whatever it is. Now, all you need to do is the one scene and basically just have, you can do a soliloquy, you know what that is, where the person just talks and goes on. You can have interactions with an audience here. You don't even have to use a classroom metaphor. You can, like, I had one guy who did this who had served in the military. And so he put himself, I think he used the pirate one. Let me go find it real fast to see if it's still here, because it's hilarious. Uh, and he put himself in the pirate one. He was a social studies teacher. And his story was that he became um, interested in this because he uh, was always getting lost. And so he used the pirate one as a way of showing how he became oh and here's superheroes it's quite a lot in this so i can scroll down and let's put us on an island if i can find an island here we are i'm going to put an island in here and i can go in and i can do the same thing get rid of this guy put you know my guy in and i can write let's go ahead and oh let's go on over this is how you add characters you already know how to do that now you can add your character once you click on the character you can change his size her size by just like you would anything uh if you want to have them a little tilted you can <laughs> uh you can come in and do actions you can have the character doing something if you want them to have an action you can do the dialogue which we already did you can actually have the character enter and exit, which you really don't need to do for this particular application because all you're doing is you are basically having your person do a little talk. You can add props. So if I wanted to add a little cart there to basically explained that I was working at Walmart and I got really tired of that and so I went into teaching you can do that you can add a text box so if you want to have something up here my incredible journey you can put that in um, this is widgets if you wanted to add that which you won't or you can add music uh, so if you want to have your little soliloquy your little monologue have some music going along with it you could do that I'll go ahead and throw in a beautiful day down here oops I added too much and by the way, to get rid of anything, you basically just click on it and it pops up and you can do things like I just did, which is get rid of it. I want to preview this, which will be extremely short because I really haven't done that much here. I started my career after many years wandering the earth looking for myself. Okay. So... I'm going to save that, and when I do, it wants a title. I'm just going to put my journey, 
Don't worry about uh, where it puts it or don't worry about descriptions. Uh, just make sure you put your name in it so it's easy for you to find if you have to find it again. And then I'm going to save it and I'm going to go to the video page. I'm going to post it to the group, everyone. And now we're here where we can finally get it. So this is your video that you've just created. I'm going to share, export it. I'm going to go get the embeddable code, our old friend, the embeddable code. I'm going to copy that pop back into my PB works, turn on the edit button, drop down below my answer garden one. I'm going to go to insert Java, put the code in, make sure I check the box. Next, and I'm going to insert the plugin. If I save it, I now have underneath all of this. Well, I'm getting a naval flash thing, which is you all remember that's par for the course around here. And there it is. Wow. Does your front page have a lot of stuff on it? <laughs> so we have a title, we have a sign, we have either a padlet or a wall, a uh, answer garden, and now we have your little video. Revolver Globe Encounter. What are those? Well, let's jump in here. Who I am. Tools for who I am. Revolver Globes. Okay, so this is how this works. So here's a globe. All these widgets that you can use with this are free. It's, it's again, it's just as simple as it can get. If you want to use the one that's up here, it's just as simple as copy this code that's right here. If you want to have a different look, you can follow the links down here. That'll put a different look. So I'm going to go ahead and take this one. So I'm going to copy it to clipboard. And by now, this has become very routine for you. I'm going to scroll down where my last one was. I'm going to give myself a new link, a new insertion point, excuse me. I'm going to insert HTML JavaScript, Control V, allow the JavaScript, next, insert the plugin, save, scroll down, and there's my globe. And as you can see, it's showing that I have had a unique visitor uh, in Louisville, Kentucky. Isn't that cool? So if uh, when you were, if I, I could take you to it on our page that Caroline and I own. Um, this is like St. Louis, Florida. There's all kinds of places. Um, surprisingly, you know where we get the most of our hits from is Canada. Isn't that interesting? Like that one. I, I really like that one. All right, what's the counter do then, Steve? Okay, so on the counter, what you can do is the counter will show you uh, multiple uh, when people come to your page. In other words, views. Okay. And so here they are. So you can pick which one of these you like. Remember that the, the uh, globe is basically doing your unique. So in other words, the first time somebody comes, it shows it and where they're from. This counter shows the views, how many times somebody has come and visited your page, visited your wiki. So I'm going to click on that one. And I had to jump through a little bit of sites here. And let's see. 
No, it doesn't do education. All right, well, I'll just do, how about references? Okay, number of digits, how many digits do I want it to show? Whoa, uh, where do I want it to start? Okay, do I want it to appear standard, top left? I'm gonna do bottom left, like that. But I could just do like that. You know, you get the idea. Or I could do a standard. Okay. I want to make sure that I do a hit counter. No, I don't. Yes, I do. I want to do a hit counter. That's the views. The visitors are the unique. So I want to do a hit counter. And I want it to be public. In other words, people can see it. And I'll go ahead and submit all that. And once again... <laughs> There it is, there's my JavaScript code. I'm gonna jump back into my PBWorks page. Isn't that cool how I can zoom in on the globe? I love that globe. And I'm gonna come up here and do my edit. Scroll down my page. Put my insertion point in. Insert HTML JavaScript. Paste it in, JavaScript, etc. Do a next, insert the plugin, do a save, and now I have everything. Cool. It's that simple. So let's look at the first assignment because if you've been with me, You've just completed it. Um, what we've done is we have created a PBWorks wiki space, or wiki. <laughs> I got to get that word out of my head. We, we are using PBWorks. We created a page. On our front page, we put the following. We did a sign from the Red Kid Sign Generator that basically is sort of a, hi, welcome to my thing. We created a Padlet or an answer garden. And we have done our story from Go Animate, and we have put in a globe and a counter. All you need to do now is to go into the Who I Am, open up the articles for Module 1, and read them. And then in your PBWorks page, on this front page, You're going to turn on the editing and then you can write in your response to the articles. Now, I've had people who've asked me, Steve, I don't want to mess up my pretty front page with me writing about something. Okay, fine. Create a new page and name it Article Reflection Module 1. So let's go to Pages and Files, New, Create a Page, Module 1 article review. That way you can have your own nice little site or your nice little page where you now have the ability to write about your first mo uh, module, but it doesn't mess up your beautiful front page that you have made. Okay. Either way is fine. Get that off of there. Let me put something in here. Module one. Okay, I can now save it. And I can drop down over here and go to my front page. And I now have a front page as well as a module article page. Either way, either way is fine. Guess what? It's almost 11 o'clock. Did I tell you I'd get you out of here before noon? I have. Now, what you're doing, I hope you're doing, is you've been able to follow along fairly well. Um, and I think where we are, Oh, okay, I'm back. So let me jump into the questions here. It's the new one. Works now. Did you do a bit counter or a visitor counter? I would do a hit counter page. 
The hit counter basically counts the number of times um, someone comes, so it can do multiples, whereas a visitor is a unique. So in other words, if I came to your wiki page, it would just give me one. But if you want to see how many times I've come to your wiki page, you want to make it a hit counter. Any questions? I've got the chat room open now. I can see you all. Because I need to I need to work with our young lady. She didn't leave, did she? No. Okay. Went to the bathroom. Okay. So I'm going to work with Christine here in a minute so we can get her up to speed. That's the way it's going to work for the rest of the week, you all. So tomorrow I'll come in here and do a song and dance about Twitter and it the way it works. We will work together on creating a Twitter feed. If you already have a Twitter feed, you are more than welcome to use that one. What I'm going to show you is how to get your Twitter feed under control, because I'll use mine, which is not under control. And I'll show you how to build a widget that will be a part of your Twitter feed. Now, if you want to use the entire Twitter feed and put it in, in other words, if you've never had a Twitter feed before, you can, or you can do very discreet Twitter list, Twitter recommendations, and then that becomes the widget that you then will embed into your PBWorks wiki page. That's all there is to it. Um, and then you will respond to those articles that are in that module too. And again, if you want to make that a, another page or put it on the same page as where your wiki will sh or your Twitter will show up, that's fine. Either way, I know some people in the past when they've done this, they don't like having everything on the one page. It's too complicated, too messy. But, um, you know, what we've created today, I like. I like the look of this. As I've, I've said it multiple times, I really love this uh, animated uh, Padlet. I think that's cool. Kids would really get into that. The answer garden is clean, lean, very simple. You know Go Animate. I don't have to really go out to Go Animate. Um, I love the globe. I think the globe is also cool. And then the counter. It's just a way for you to know if people are really looking at or in visiting your page. Okay. I'm back over here. Oh, sure. You know, in case you all haven't caught on, <laughs> we're recording all of this. And so if you can't be here tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., or if you have to go somewhere, like on Thursday, I hope they're going about your foot page. I hope it's getting better. Uh, please do. The video will be sitting here. Now, just like Collaborate, the old one, this isn't very quick about converting over. And what it does is when you come in, you'll see this pancake up here, hamburger buns, pick your, you know, analogy. And when you click on it, it will have the ability for you to see recordings. Okay? You click on that, and then it'll show up. And I'll name the recordings, you know, Tuesday, June 5, Set Up PV Works, Module 1. Okay? So it'll be obvious what it is. For right now, it's running, so I can't, you don't see it. And I'll be stopping the recording here just in a minute because unless you want me, I don't think you want me to record while I'm teaching Christine. It would just be doing it all over again. So, yeah. So, if, if uh, Alex wants to basically uh, sleep in tomorrow morning and then drop in later in the day to see what we did yesterday, how fast can I turn these around? Um... I'm going to say three hours. So in other words, I, when I stop this recording, I'll get a link to it around three o'clock, two o'clock this afternoon. So, you know, it's not instantaneous. That's the only bad thing about it. Oh, look. Look up there, Jess and everybody. I do have a pause button. No, that's sharing. Don't want to do that. I want to keep sharing. <laughs> <laughs> we want to share. All righty. I really don't have any more to say, guys, unless you've got something for me. Hey, can you hear me? Sure can. Okay. Um, I just had a quick question. I thought it would be easier to talk to you. 
on the articles that we have to read and reflect on, mm -hmm. um, it just, just says copy and paste your URL of your wiki. Do we just post those on our wiki then with everything else, like make a page or something? Sure. Okay. Think about it, uh, Paige. Really, what's so easy about this class is if all you do is put that over into live text, right? Yeah. I see everything. I see everything. Okay. So you don't have to worry about being the real specific, like, here's where this is, you know. Just give me the name. And if you have you looked at the final? Have you looked at it? How it's very, very short. Right. It's very straightforward. So if all you do is go into module one in live text, put in the URL to your work PB works, module two, same thing. Don't worry, you're gonna get me for the rest of the day. Same thing. You have to go. Okay, don't worry, you talk. We're all friends here. <laughs> so you're leaving? Okay. Do you know how to get to the recording? All right. And you know how to reach me using my text thing. Okay. Are you going to come back? Can I come back? Of course you can come back. Yes. Hmm? How long am I going to be here today? I'll walk. Okay. Did it answer your page? Yeah. So I just keep adding to the front page or I can make new pages. Christina. You cannot fail this class. Okay, you will be fine. Yeah. All right, baby. I was fine. Good deal. Yeah, that's all I need. That will be all I need. Okay. Okay. Because what I want, you know, reason why I'm being this flexible about it is I want this thing to really be something that you could use. And so I don't want it to be what Steve wants. I want it to look like what Paige wants it to look like. I want Paige to be able to use this. And so I want to make sure from the get-go that we all understand that we have the freedom to build this thing the way we want it to, to look. Um, and so, like, you know, tomorrow you're going to build a page that has your Twitter feed. Well, what are you going to call that page? Twitter feed. So okay. when I go in and look at it, if all you do is put me on your landing page, your front page, well, then I'm just going to look over here for those various pages. And I'll, ign I'll look at all the pages, sure, but then when I'm done with it, you get it back, you could go in and you could delete out the pages that you don't feel like you need to have if you want to use this thing back at school. So in other words, you'll delete out the pages that are maybe your article reviews, or you go to the page where you've written the article review actually on the page and then delete out the, the word. You know, however you want to do it is fine. You might want to put an answer garden on the Twitter page just so people could pop in and ask questions as well as see the Twitter feed. Okay. You're learning how to build things here. I want you to have the freedom to build it the way you want to build it. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're quite welcome. I have a question. Go for it. Uh, are we putting this on live text as we go? Like one -on -one no. On we can do that Friday. Okay. Yeah. We can do all that Friday. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, it's it's in the, the let me pop into live text and show you. Sure. Okay. Let me pop into live text and let's look because it looks really different from any other class. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> we had a we had a slight hiccup. Steve closed the tab. <laughs> so let's Steve. Well, I'm going to be very careful now and closing the other tabs, and let's just focus on live text. There it is. Okay, but I still got to go in and share the page. Let me go do that. 
There the application, just an application, boom, and we're sharing. And now we get the scary look. So there's the scary look, so we know we're sharing. Okay, so the question was asked in the room by Jessica. Say hi to Jessica, everybody. Uh, is what's it going to look like in live text? Well, let's go look at it in live text. In live text, all you're doing is you have just one task, and it's the hallmark. In other words, it's the final. And so when you go in and look at it, what I've done is I have collapsed everything into just one page. See, and here it is. So here's module one, here's module two, module three, module four. And then it basically down here has some places for you to respond to what we've been doing. That's it. And so to answer Paige's question, if all you do is you drop in the URL of your wiki PLN in here, and it's the front page, I'm going to see all the other pages. So you don't have to get all specific about put in the one for the Twitter page, put in the one for the RSS page, put in the one for the Pinterest page. You don't have to get all that specific. Down here at the bottom, of course, you'll have to hit your edit and then you'll have to actually answer it right there. And again, you know best, you do not give me the great American novel. You're just going to give me a paragraph with three to five sentences about your thinking. Now, again, I apologize for blowing up everything. Let me drop back in here to our Twitter, not our Twitter, but to our chat box. What else you've got for me, guys? 